From the director of Jackie and Spencer comes a vampire Pinochet film. All right. Uh, seems like a giant leap in, in a different direction, but let's see what Pablo Lorraine's up to. Uh, I'm John Stark from ActiveMovieGuy.com, so click that subscribe button because I love you. I do. And this is going to be a review of El Conde. Uh, for those of you who see my videos on my channel, you may have seen a video where I talked about El Conde, Netflix, and the problem with gatekeeping, which is just a brief overview of what happens when El Conde drops and there's no audio description. It's something that Netflix has a problem with by creating exclusive international content that is available nowhere else and then they don't create accessibility for it so it's not like I can I can't rent it on VOD it's not going to pass to another streaming service where I can hope for it to have audio description somewhere we're just all SOL every anybody who ever wants to watch anything so I can't expand my horizons and enjoy international cinema anymore now that I'm blind I just you know screw me but I said I would review this film regardless because it it I would have reviewed it even without the English dub track, just to be totally honest. I would have just sat there and listened to people speak, speak Spanish for uh, an hour and 50 minutes and told you what that experience was like. But Netflix paid for an English dub cast, which helped. Um, this is a vampire horror movie, and I can tell you I didn't get any of that <laughs> in the dialogue. Um, so... Let's let's jump in. Let's let's talk about El Conde. And by the way, yes, I did review it with a clear heart and a and a clear mind, and n not not with like a, I'm gonna get Netflix. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is this is a very interesting film. <laughs> it wasn't what I thought it was gonna be, and I wasn't really prepared for it. Uh, I actually, it's actually, it's actually kind of a shame that they didn't go ahead and put audio description on it because I would have really loved this film, um, I think. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell, but there's almost a rhythm and a pattern to the dialogue and how things are presented in this film that reminds me a lot of Hulu's The Great, if that makes any sense to anybody. <laughs> Um, there's just sort of an awkwardness in this aristocracy, uh, surrounding Pinochet with his, his family and close friends and, and the way that people talk to each other and interact with people, with, with people. And they talk a lot about how, um, the devil is here and they have to get the devil out. There's one really entertaining sequence where, um... There, uh, this one character was talking about removing the devil and, and she said there's only two ways the devil can enter a man through the wars of through the, the, the wounds in battle or through anal and, and then she's like cut off by somebody else who's like my husband is a respectable man <laughs> um, yeah it's 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 just such an oddly quirky movie, and I hated Spencer. I'm sorry, I did. I watched Spencer, and I didn't like Kristen Stewart in it. I didn't like the film. I just, the whole nothing worked for me. So I was really interested to see what Pablo Lorraine would do with this. I think this is his jam. I think this is his thing. Um, I would again. Uh, I can't fully comment on the the entire film because there's no audio description. So what I got were was dialogue that felt like it fell out of the grate, but I don't know what the I don't know what the violence and the gore was. I got no violence and gore, basically. Um and it's not one of those films, by the way, that ever felt like it was scary. Like where like the mood and the theme were like like I was missing jump scares. I don't know what I was missing. They talked a couple times about things that could have been gory, um, like uh, ripping out of hearts 
what was a big theme. People kept, somebody was ripping out hearts. Somebody was ripping out hearts uh, in Chile. And uh, that, I guess, I don't know if they were showing that every time, but that, I guess, could be pretty gory. Um, the thing is that Pinochet is refusing to feed, so I don't know how gory this all is. You know, if he doesn't want to feed, if he's trying to die, uh, you know. But uh, they, I think at some point somebody made like a milkshake type thing <laughs> of like an old woman's blood or internal organs or something because there's like a comment about how mm, an old woman will not give him the nourishment that he needs. <laughs> but it sounds like they're talking from like a perspective of I just looked inside of a blender and uh yeah so i don't know it could be violence and gore the problem is not many people have seen this film so even when i go to imdb to see what i missed they're like a horse gets decapitated and i'm like well i didn't get that but anything else happened in the film <laughs> this was rated r for rape and sex and nudity was rated as being mild so i was like i uh, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. But then again, only like three people had rated it. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't. I can't even. I don't even have a comparison right now. I saw it so early that there wasn't even something for me to bounce against the wall of what did I miss? I'm assuming a lot because. If you, if I had watched this with no knowledge of what the movie was about and just watched this cold and this had been like some sort of secret screening and somebody just was like, you're watching this. And I'm like, all right. Um, I never would have guessed what it was. I would have thought it was maybe like a vampire comedy, like sort of in the vein of Renfield. Um, uh, they, you know, it's suggested, but it's never... It, there's some talk where you could pick up on the fact that it's vam that's a vampire film, but it's not like heavily discussed. This isn't Buffy, you know. <laughs> this is not, that's not what this is. Um, but for a film about a about a Chilean dictator that is not well like remembered. Um, I mean, like people like historically, yes, people know his name, but I I mean, like he's not 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 a good dude. Anyway, um, I think the best quote that I heard was, in order to make a movie about a monster, sometimes you have to make a monster movie. Yeah. Uh, I think that, that makes perfect sense. Um, and I, <laughs> I would not have guessed that this movie had any sort of a serious tone to it. It feels a lot lighter than I expected it to be. And it certainly with all of the stuff that it's rated R for, I had a hard time picking up on that. I had a hard time picking up on the strong violence and gore and uh, any sort of nudity or uh, rape. There's some talks about some bed sheets that have been ruined. Um, it's about all I can get from maybe the sex and nudity portion. Is, is that the bed sheets have been ruined. <sighs> There's actually quite a bit of characters here. And the funny thing is that they're all dubbed with not just English-speaking actors, but British actors. Which actually makes it feel more like the great, because it feels like one of those really elevated types of humor things. There's something about when you put a British cast versus an American cast that somehow it feels like it's elevated humor. And you're just like, oh, this is, this is witty. This is, <laughs> this is something above my, above my level of intelligence. I feel smarter for watching it. Um, so, uh, I, kudos. I mean, I've, I've run into so many bad, uh, you know, bad dubbing performances in the past, but there's a lot of narration done by a female character in here who, by the way, at the end when they uh, reveal sort of like who that person is slash becomes, I was I was kind of like, well, that's a nice twist. 
Um, but I, her narration was so like it felt like it felt like you know from Bridgerton or Downton Abbey or something. It was so contrasting to this. I th- I have no idea what what the experience is because I can't speak Spanish, so I don't know what the original uh, experiences of listening to the original actress play that role but (laughs) using what they used really just kind of put an entirely interesting spin on this for me for something that I wasn't expecting um and I kind of liked it it might actually be my favorite Pablo Lorraine movie (laughs) um maybe because he's not taking himself seriously I don't think he was trying to win awards here I think this film, because he's Pablo Lorraine, ended up going to festivals, but I don't think he's trying to do anything. He just kind of was like, I'm going to make a vampire Pinochet movie, and they're like, all right, let's give him some money. Um, Maybe maybe it'll be... And then Chile's like, no, we're not going to submit that for international Oscar. What are you talking about? (laughs) No. And I think they made the right call. I don't know what this would do. It's not going to get an international Oscar nomination. It's it's a quirky film, but it goes even more towards my why is this not audio described? <laughs> this film is so accessible. It's 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 funny and it's uh, darkly com- comic. It's not like hilarious, like Wedding Crashers hilarious. It's just. It's sort of the kind of like, you know, where you just chuckle to yourself or you smirk or or you're like, oh, I get the humor in that, you know? Um, but it is incredibly hard to follow because he's supposed to be a vampire. And they're talk- they talk about like how he's hunting and he hasn't been hunting in years. And um, just uh, obviously some people had to die. And I didn't get any of that in this film. So... Um, if you if you have kids and uh, and you're questioning whether or not they should watch this, well, if they're blind, I would say it becomes PG thirteen. There's really nothing in the dialogue that would that would cause this thing to necessarily be offensive. Um, I didn't remember this film for having a ton of curse words or anything like that in it, so. Um, God, it's a shame. It's really a shame because I think I think I would have really loved this movie. Um, I don't know because there's no audio description. So in between the dialogue, I'm missing. It doesn't feel like a horror film. It feels like a like a comic take on what a horror film could be um, if all of the horror happened off screen. You know, that's kind of what it feels like when I don't get it described. It's like. They're living in a world where horror exists, but we don't get to see any of it. So, um, anyway, it's an interesting feature. I really love the score for this. I thought Pablo Lorraine's uh, choice of of music was actually quite beautiful. And when you don't have audio description, it's uh, that's, that is one of the lone benefits of of not having audio description is really. Uh, being able to hear the entire score because sometimes the audio description is talking on top of the score so it becomes a little bit more of a challenge to fully appreciate the score although really terrific scores can still soar you know Oppenheimer can still come through um but that's it I don't really have much else to say this is usually the section where we talk about the effectiveness of the audio description but there is none uh, unfortunately, I'm gonna. I, I would. I was afraid this was gonna be the grade. That was part of the problem with the whole situation. Is I can't really grade this. I'm a blind film critic, and uh, there's too much of this film that I'm missing. And I, I mean, this just for what this film is rated R for. I didn't pick up on any of that. I'd have been like rated PG for <laughs> some <laughs> some thematic elements. <laughs> You know, um, I don't know, they just, they talk around a lot of the things, uh, maybe actually PG-13, but, uh, yeah, it just didn't, it, it didn't hit, and, uh, certainly wasn't scary, um, if there was any great creature effects here, or design, I didn't get any of that, nothing, so, 
I feel like there's a huge chunk of this film that I'm missing, but the little glimmer that I got gives me great hope that if this film ever did have audio description on it, I think I would really like it. So, um, Netflix, get your shit together, because this film is probably worth it. That's my guess. It's also possible that the scenes in between the dialogue just are awful and terrible, and I don't know, maybe there's a contrast there. Maybe it's light and fluffy in the in the dialogue, and then the the, the rest of the stuff is so dark that it's just uh, it totally changes the film. Who knows? I don't. Which is why I'm giving El Conde unwatchable. Though so, that's my grade. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And hopefully one day Netflix will realize, hey. We create international content that we keep showing to American audiences. We should probably offer them English audio description. Um, anyway, just a thought, you know, just a little, little, little bit of a thought there. Um, I do have a website, MacMovieGuy.com. You can subscribe to me here, or you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, or threads at MacTheMovieGuy. You can go to the audio description project, adp.acb.org. It'll let you know what is audio description and where you can watch it. And you can go to the adna.org. That's the adna.org. It'll let you know who is narrating your favorite films and television series. That's it for me. I will review something else. And see you guys on the other side. <laughs>